Hey everybody, welcome to another Goodie Reader Review video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're proud to review the Seiko Spirit 003. This is an e-ink based watch and only one of the very few that are actually on the market. And this is the latest model uh, from the Japanese based Seiko. It's stainless steel band. It has, what's the screen size? The screen size is actually rectangular. There's no exact resolution dimensions, but we have one and a quarter inch by one inch. And if you measure diagonally, you get one and one half inches. Okay, so this has EPD technology. So this is the same type of screen that you would see in your Amazon Kindle, your Kobo, your Barnes & Noble, Nook, Simple Touch, and so on. Uh, the essence of the technology is negatively charged white particles and positively charged black particles suspended in a clear fluid. This is an example of, underneath, of, of how the screen works. You can see the white ones are always going to be floating to the top, whereas the black ones are at the bottom. Even if you mix it up, you'll see that they always go to their respective corners. So th these in the screen are about the width of a human hair. So very, very small and unnoticeable, but this is the spirit of actually what's in the screen here. Definitely. So this watch is solar powered, so it will power itself and so basically you'll never run out of battery life and it is e-ink and you can see here that it says uh, the current time and uh, we can also do a lot of things like uh, Peter here is going to show you some of the features. Before we dive into the screen you'll see we have a very very nice looking watch as it is. You'll see if I catch a little bit of light this purple bezel is where the solar panel is located so you want that to be exposed. Um, the screen is e-ink, of course. You have stainless steel band. You can remove some links if it doesn't quite fit. It closes like so. Seiko em embossed logo. Seiko at the back as well. You have two buttons on the side. One is for, well, they pretty much co um, correspond to whatever is on the screen at any given time. This is usually up and down based on what you'll see there. This is usually enter. This is usually back. And what this one does is actually turn on a front light. So this thing does have front light technology as well. And we'll show you at the end of the video how it actually performs. Right. So we're going to press the OK button to wake it up here. And from here, you see you have the right button up here. So what we can do is change styles. Excuse the shakiness. It's very hard to keep this aimed at a one inch screen. So bear with us. So you have different styles here on how you want everything to kind of look. This one's really hard to read. We'll keep it on style number one for the time being. We're going to go and dive into the menu. You have four main options here. You have world time. We'll check this one out first. It pretty well shows the major markets. So like Tokyo, Tehran, Chicago, New York, LA, and uh, countries all across Europe. Right. So you see I'm pressing the left button right now. It's saying move left. And what we're going to do is travel the world to the left until we get to where we need to go. So we're in Berlin, we're in Paris, and so forth. So that's what you can do with that. We're also going to go back and now get out of this menu. And then you can go down to alarm. We'll just show you each individual category because there's not many, and I'm sure you guys all want to see them. So here you can set your alarm. We can dive into this one, change the time. You can set that. So now, every day, it's going to go off at 9 p.m. You can switch it to one time, switch it to daily, and so forth. And you can set up to three alarms. Fairly useful. Radio wave is where you can receive signals to get the most updated time. However, they're only accurate to about a thousand miles. So. Based on where you are, they have about five receptors. The UK, um, Germany, Tokyo, another part, couple parts of Asia, and the USA. Unfortunately, where we are, it's actually right at the very corner here in Vancouver, BC, just above Seattle, and we cannot get reception. We actually have to be about three or 400 kilometers, uh, a little bit more south. So we're not going to be able to show you that, unfortunately, but you can tell here the last time it was updated. So you can see here it was updated on the 4th of July in Japan 
at uh, 4 or 7 a.m. So. And what this really does is when you're traveling, it'll automatically configure the time zone that right. you're in. So you don't uh, have to manually adjust the time uh, like you would on a normal wristwatch. This will automatically scan a tower and change the time zone and country that you're in if you're traveling overseas, which is very useful. Exactly. And with that, with the radio wave setting, it says that it is supposed to be accurate between plus or minus 15 seconds at all times. So that's that's really good if you want to be early for your meetings and all that. So we'll go through a couple more settings under the setting menu, home city and time zone. We've selected Los Angeles, which is the uh, negative eight, which is where we are in uh, Vancouver, just north. So you can change the time zones accordingly. Anchorage, Alaska, LA, and then you can go to Denver, which is uh, mountain time. So we'll leave it on LA for that. And yes, we're daylight savings right now. You can adjust the time. This is where you manually adjust the time. 12 hour time, 24 hour time, and the year and date. Hey, it's actually the right date. Yes, indeed. Home and local. What this is, is you can set a home and a wherever you are at the moment time. And say we're in LA and we go to a, you know, a trip to Paris. Well, now you can have both time zones there so you'll know what's happening back home and you, you'll also be on time for everything you're doing on your vacation. You can switch those to whatever you want your home to be and whatever you want your destination to be. And we showed you how to set the alarm, but this is actually how it, how it sounds. So that'll be annoying enough for you to want to turn that off. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the last thing that we want to do uh, in this review is to show you how the front light works. And this is actually a front lit, much like how the Kobo Glow, the Amazon Kindle Paperwhite, how they approach the front lit technology. So we're going to turn off the studio lights and then we're going to turn the front light on. Okay, we're in complete darkness, obviously, and uh, let's see how the front light uh, display works. We've upped the exposure just a touch so we can get the best result we can out of this. So you can kind of see it, but if you actually have the watch, it's not very readable. So we'll turn that on. Now, because unlike most e-readers where the light spans the entire length of the top or bottom, there's actually only two little bulbs on the side, and to be honest, this is one of the only shortcomings I can see of this watch, is that the front light isn't that great. You get 90% of the light on the very right with massive glare, and the rest just doesn't quite reach the other side of the screen. It just doesn't, it doesn't get there. And I mean, this is why when e-readers have front light, uh, Kobo, Amazon have it through the bottom, right. paint it up and uh, Barnes & Noble Nook has at the top facing down. Right. This is actually one of the few e-paper screens that I've seen that actually has a side-lit display. And this obviously shows you why companies go mainly with the bottom up or top down because you can get it distributed on a screen where the side, you only illuminate a little portion of it, which I gather is enough to get the time here, which is basically all you want. You can see it, sure, it's not comfortable, and there's just, and that's another reason why not only do they put them on the top or bottom, they use more than two lights, because look how harsh that is. If you had a row of lights, maybe three or four at the top, you'd at least get a more even spread, and it would look a lot softer. Uh, so in the end, this may not be the most ideal watch to read in the dark, but I think as a novelty factor, this is one of the only watches in the world that uses a true e-ink display. I know I'm going to hang on to this and rock it everywhere I go. So if you are at a cool trade show, if you're at a publishing event, you see a young bloke with a watch like this, you will know it's me. And I think it, it looks damn good. It ha carries a premium price. It's roughly about $450 plus, and that's a US. And it's only available through Seiko in Japan. But most of the times you have to go through a third party because Seiko in Japan does not ship outside of Japan. So you usually have to get it on eBay and stuff like that, which is why you probably don't see a lot of uh, people with this watch. But Seiko is a luxury brand. It's sort of like, uh, like D&G, Armani, it's their products are not cheap uh, this is a little bit more in a gimmick I think this is a very cool sexy refined watch the only downside is the front lid display is kind of weak but other than that it's I have no, no complaints at all not at all I think the only thing I've seen that 
I, I mean, the price isn't a factor because the thing is just totally cool. Yeah. And that's what you're getting, what you're paid for. You really are. But honestly, the only thing I can see are those two little tiny LEDs on the right. It's just kind of silly. It just doesn't work. Yeah. So if you never, you know, you've heard our views. Let's hear yours. Please comment on this video. Any questions, concerns, please let us know. And for goodyreader.com and a review of the Seiko Spirit 003, my name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.